Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So just a little bit ago, I saw a tweet from Macaulay, who is the security researcher who brought us the ability to run PlayStation 2 game ISOs on a fully up-to-date PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 over the network tweet out that he is working on a USB implementation. Now, I've said this pretty much since the beginning, that USB was going to be possible, and today what we have is we have a working video of what that looks like. So I thought we would begin here by taking a look at his video. Okay, so he is going to restore a game, just like we've been doing in the past, and now he sends over a USB PS2 game loader. Now it says right up there at the top, PS2 game loader USB. And the very first prompt right here is that it's going to ask him, does he want to play Clona2.iso? Now the reason for this, and we'll look at it in just a second, is, is that right now there isn't a great way to be able to select which game ISO off of your USB that you might want to play. And so right now, he basically has implemented a way where it will just prompt you for each ISO that's in the folder. So right here, he's going to select no to this one. And now there's another game ISO on his USB stick, and this is Burnout 3. And on this one, he is going to say yes here. And so now it is obviously loading the game file a lot faster than it would over an actual network. And there is the title screen, which is Burnout 3 Takedown. Okay, let's look at some of the additional notes that he's put in here because we should be getting probably a release from him very soon where we can go ahead and start taking advantage of this versus sending these ISO images over a network. It currently has a FAT32 file system implemented. However, this limits files to 4 gigabyte, and many PS2 games are over that. I plan to try instead to implement the XFAT or NTFS file system to support larger files. For the most part, that is absolutely true. There's a ton of PlayStation 2 games that is actually over that 4 gigabyte limit, but there's still quite a bit of games that you could play if we were just limited to 4 gigabytes. Obviously, FAT32 is a pretty outdated file system, but again, in all of the like PlayStation 2 era, that was really you know the best that we had. And so the second note that he put in here was, was that load speed is not instant as the game needs to be copied from the USB to HDD before playing. It should, however, be faster than most people's network speed. And again, remember, it is copying your game just to the local system. Now, when you close out of Okage Shadow King, then the game is removed from the disk, which means that you are always going to have to send over the ISO first. Now, I run a Ethernet connection here in my home where I record all of these videos, and it is pretty much impossible to beat you know, the speeds of USB versus running it over an Ethernet cable, for example, and especially doing it over Wi-Fi. So this is something that would be better for most people. And then the next one here is that the USB file structure currently looks like this. And we can see he's got a USB drive called F, and then he's got a folder there called Games. So I would expect we would need to have our USB stick in this sort of manner. And then there's two ISO images, Clona 2 and then Burnout 3. And again, it says, however, if we can figure out loading custom emulation configuration files or Lua files, this will likely change to one directory per game. And again, with these custom emulation configuration files right here, this could do things such as if we know a certain game plays better with these settings turned off, well, then we could 
potentially have some sort of a local database or in the configuration file of this, which could say, okay, if you're going to load this ROM, load it with these flags in order to make it playable. And then the last one here was a pop-up dialog to ask which game to play is not ideal. However, it is currently the best and easiest way I can think of of selecting a game from the USB without doing it externally over the network. And so I did mention that a little bit earlier, so there's still some things to work out there. Now, he did write back in here where there was this question of what was the size of the ISO you loaded, and he said it was 2.8 gigabyte, which is the file size of Burnout 3. And he said, again, though the load time was faster in the video, the actual speed it took to copy this game was a minute or two. The transfer, this is obviously sped up, and this wasn't the actual real time that it took to load that game file. And then there was just a couple of other quick updates that I thought I would just go ahead and put in this video. One of them is, is that Echo Stretch has obviously created a new game save for version 0.1.3. And if you want to know again what was in that version, you can check out my video that happened just yesterday where I actually walked through the changes. Basically, the two main changes was TCP support and also adding the ability to load multiple ELF files without having to restart the Okage Shadow King game. Again, this does not work with the PS2 network game loader ELF file, but it does work with the other ones, such as the light bar and the notification. And then the last thing that I just wanted to mention was, was that there is an Okage PS2 emulation compatibility sheet that has been started. And then down at the bottom here, you will see that they're starting to break this out between different versions. Now, the rest of these aren't really filled in just yet, but for 10.01 on the PlayStation 4, well, there's quite a bit of data already. So you could come in here and potentially, you know, look for a game that you wanted, and then you could see whether or not it is working or working with issues or needs a workaround. Now, there's also some notes that are in here, but if you see anything here with the green, then that does mean that it is working. Now, it doesn't look like there's an awful lot in here, but it looks like this list was just started a couple of days ago. But I would consult this guide before I played a game just to see kind of what the community is thinking about it. Okay, well, that is going to do it for this one. I will see you on the next one. Michael, out!